Well, good afternoon and welcome to the Idahoan Show. Uh, many of you may remember my homemade Utah pistol and the homemade 40 s and barrel that I made for it, mostly to prove that it was possible to make a rifled barrel without using machine tools. Well, the snow is finally melting off this spring, and as I was walking around out at my shooting range, I found one of the bullets uh, that we fired through that barrel in initial testing this winter. And so I thought it might be worth showing you this and talking a little bit about what we can learn from analyzing the rifling markings on this bullet. Now, the first thing that is probably pretty obvious is that there are rifling markings on this bullet. Uh, we've got a bunch of nice parallel angled grooves left in the jacket of the bullet by the rifling as the bullet was passing through the barrel. Uh, so clearly the rifling is engaging the bullet and imparting spin to it uh, as it's intended. Now the other thing though that I notice as I'm looking at this bullet is that the number of grooves is about twice as many as the lands in the barrel. Um, and the grooves are very narrow, or most of them are. And so what that tells me is that it's not the full rifling land that's engaging the bullet. It's only the ridges of raised metal on the edges of the lands where the steel kind of flowed out of the way as we were cold working the uh, grooves into the, into the barrel. Um, that's engaging the jacket of the bullet and, you know, and allowing the rifling to do its job. And so what that tells me is that the bore is probably just a few thousandths of an inch too large, or at least it's a few thousandths of an inch larger than the factory spec for a 40 s and um, It's clearly still doing its job. I mean, you know, the, the muzzle velocity was pretty comparable to a standard 40 s and w barrel, so we're not, uh, we're not losing a lot of pressure uh, due to a slightly oversized bore. And the rifling is still able to engage the bullet and spin it, so the only real detrimental effect I can think of that this might have on performance would be that there'd be a little bit of gas escaping around the bullet as it's leaving the barrel, uh, and that could have a little bit of a destabilizing effect that could detrimentally affect accuracy. But in testing, I thought the accuracy was pretty respectable for a homemade pistol that doesn't have any sights. Uh, and so without putting a, a sophisticated sight on that gun, any difference that this, this effect is going to have is probably negligible. Um, but of course, to uh, make a bore a couple thousand smaller, you know, of a, a more... Uh, appropriate size or, or a more precisely the right size for this bullet, I'd have to make a custom drill bit or reamer. Uh, and I am at this very moment working on a jig to allow me to cut uh, custom drill bits and reamers using my milling machine. So sometime in the future I hope to make some more precise barrels for the Utah pistol. But in the meantime, I uh, just thought some of you might be interested to see this, uh, and so until next time, thanks for watching The Idahoan Show. <laughs>